Holly and I am the soap maker here at Missouri River Soap and I'm going to kick off my soaps for 2022 today. It has been almost four months since I've made soap and that's just crazy for me. So today I'm going to make some lavender soaps made with goat milk and they will be blends and I don't know if I'll film both but we'll just see how it goes because it has been quite some time. So I'm going to get my safety gear on and I will be back to start the batch. So I have my base oils here and I do use a blend of olive and coconut and castor and cocoa butter. I have some sodium lactate in here as well. I'm also going to add into these base oils some goat milk and I just have some fresh goat milk. Well, it's not that, it's, it's fresh, but it's from the store. It's not, it's not like fresh from the goat. That, that would be really fresh, but this is still fresh because it comes from the store in the refrigerated section. And I'm gonna go ahead and blend that in. I'm gonna tap out the air bubbles out of the shaft. So I'm going to go ahead and add in the sodium hydroxide lye solution and I have a little bit of lilac because it is a reduced solution. I took away from the water part to accommodate the goat milk and the sodium lactate that I'm using today and sodium lactate is just a salt and it does help it to be nice and hard. So we're just going to go ahead and strain it. I made my lye solution the other day and my studio has had some temperature fluctuations and that just causes the lilac to be a little bit more pronounced. I've measured it, it's just mere grams, very, very tiny amount and that'll just slightly affect the super fat. Yeah, that's good. You can see there's just not much there, but I didn't want those to go in just in case they didn't break down into the soap batter and the lilac is just the sodium hydroxide reacting with the uh, carbon dioxide in the air to create sodium carbonate i hope i have that correct it has been a little while since i explained that it's amazing what you forget when you don't say things all the time looks like my stick blender is just a, a hint short here and it is making a racket too I apologize for the vibrate nature of this stick blender. I don't know what's happening here. I just want to bring it to emulsification because I'm going to split it off and um, I want to be able to have a little bit of time to work with the colors, etc. while since I've worked with a batch this small so I haven't worked with this stick blender in a while either and that was before the four months okay this is looking pretty good I just want to make sure it's not going to break apart it's fairly cool up here so the hard oils sometimes can solidify back up and kind of give a false trace but I think we're warm enough that I don't have to worry about that. But I'm just looking to make sure it's not going to break down. Now I do want to go ahead and put in my essential oil blend because I have not divvied it off appropriately for, you know, equally to whatever size I would need here. I don't like to just you know, put in a little bit here and there. I like it to be measured. This is looking really good. This is looking good. All right, so 
This is my essential oil blend and it is a mixture of lavender, 40-42, and lemon essential oil. And I've had good luck with the lemon essential oil, but I do expect it to fade a little bit. Some people do use kale and clay to anchor, and I used to, but I don't anymore just because I have enough customers um, that are allergic to kale and clay, so I just don't tend to use it. I was not formally a lavender lover, but I have really gotten to enjoy it and i especially like blends oh my goodness the blends are so good and i'm hoping this doesn't thicken on me i don't remember um if the lavender accelerates at all so i'm just going to stir it in and then i will stick blend the next the portioned parts okay great Now, you can see that I'm working with quite a smaller pot here, but it's very full. And so, a sort of a fear that I might spill it. Okay. All right, we're going to try. <sighs> it's funny to be nervous when I haven't made soap in so long. And go. Yep, there you go. Made a mess. Make a messes. I can fix it. But that was a significant mess, so it sure was. All right, shall we try this again? You can do it. There we go. Here are my colors that I'm using today. Move this over a hint so I have a little bit more room. I'm using some La La Yellow Mica from Mad Micas, and I have these new little, they're like a silicone popsicle stick, stirring stick doodad. I really like it. It's working out great. Kind of takes my popsicle stick thing and makes it reusable, which is ideal. Everything's nice and thin still. Ooh, and for your blends, I highly recommend going to eocalc.com and you can put in the essential oils you want to use or just look up already designed blends. I actually need to do the white first and I'm not lightening up it a lot and I realize that I'm using colors on an all natural soap, but I decided that that's what I wanted to do today. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not looking for it to be white. I don't want it to be white, white, but a little lightening up would be nice. that a little bit by hand. This is a beautiful purple. Did I mention they were from Mad Mike? As I think I did. Don't remember exactly if I did. This is a beautiful yellow. Guess we'll see what happens if it does anything weird. So this is quite thin still. This may be a bit too thin. We're not even at a trace. Let's see what this looks like. 
So now this is where I poured. So I'm just going to, I think I made a little mess. Um, I'm gonna just get the newly lightened soap kind of up and around so it pulls down the unlightened, lightened soap into the rest of the mixture. This is nice and thin as well. This is turning out great. So my plan for today on this soap batch is to do an in the pot swirl, but I do like to pour just a little bit into the mold first. So I think I'm just going to hold and let this come to it naturally. It's been a few minutes and it's starting to thicken up. Can you see how much more thick it is now? That's great. That is just super duper. These do not scrape well. Like if I do this, I get a little off, but not much. All right, so here's my mold. And it is 14 this way, 12 and a half this way, four and a half or so, top to bottom. And this is a 50 bar mold and I cut it one and a quarter. So the bars are just a little bit bigger. All right, so I just want a little of that purple down in there. My goodness gracious, this is a beautiful purple. It almost looks like it's been lightened with some titanium dioxide, but it has not. All right, let's put in the purple. And I'm just gonna save a teeny tiny bit. Now, I'm gonna cross my fingers that the yellow and the purple don't blend because that would not be super ideal. They're pretty thick, so I think they're gonna maintain, I think it's gonna maintain its color. All right, save a little bit for the top there as well. So look how beautiful that is. All right, cross your fingers for me that it doesn't have to pour from, I'm right-handed, but I have to pour from the left side because my poor shoulder is perpetually messed up. I don't have this strength, so. All right, here we go. And I always just love how it looks when that layer is down there. See, I can't see what I'm doing here. <laughs> I can't see. Oh, this looks good. I don't feel like these colors are over mixing at all. And I'm just kind of hoping for a little bit more of a muted tone. So I did really want to just use some colors today, but I didn't want to overdo it. If you'll give me a moment, I'm gonna do some scraping for a little bit. I tend to start the year with either pink and purple, which seems to be my go-to, or I start with some essential oil soaps. I'm just always ready for simple and pleasant, not overly scented type soaps at the beginning of the year. So that's just what I'm inspired to make. I don't have any unscented soaps right now and my winter skin is really wanting some unscented goodies. I'm gonna smack this down. And that's just to release any extra air bubbles that might be in there. I want the yellow to be the prominent color on top, so I'm going to just kinda splatter around this purple. It's it's pretty drizzly still, which is not what I was planning on, but you know what? Hmm. Let me think. I do love a drizzle, I do. And sometimes if your batter is the right consistency, you just have to go with it. Because you might not get the chance when you plan it out that way. Let 
So as you can tell with my particular recipe and temperature in the room and my style of stick blending, etc., that this stayed very, very workable and thin. Nice. It's probably so I'm gonna have to wash soap dishes again. I did appreciate the break from the soap dishes. That was nice. All right, let's just see how this looks. Oh my goodness gracious, this is beautiful. Beautiful, yes, I'm pretty sure it's gonna leave the drizzle on this one. I was going to do a little bit of a, a spoon design on the top, but mm, I just, I don't wanna mess this up. I love it so much. This is fun. It always reminds me how much I love making soap. I just adore it. And sometimes when I take a long break and just get overly involved in the, you know, business side of things, I forget that I like to make soap. I know it in my head, but it kind of goes away a little bit. Okay, so here we have the beautiful, oh, I need to clean up the edge. We can't, we can't stop here. I mean, this is my favorite part. I love to clean off the edge. I have to get used to this doodad though. He doesn't want to smooth down the edges the same as a regular popsicle stick would. But we'll make it work so we're not wasteful. Get a new handle on things. All right, well, we'll call that good enough. And then, I clean up the edge. This is still freezer paper. It's just not been bleached. It works pretty well. I do prefer the performance on the white, but I do like the brown. I just think the brown is nice. All right, so here we go. Now we can take a gander of this lavender lemon essential oil soap looking beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm not seeing much gray or brown from the combination of colors, so we'll just have to wait until it's cut. What I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna set this to the side for just a little bit, because it's really quite thin, but before I walk away from it for too long, I will spritz it down with some um, high percentage alcohol, and then I do cover it and allow it to just gel as it wants to gel. I'm not going to put it in a refrigerator or anything. I've used just a little amount of the goat milk. That does help to um, for the soap not to overheat if you don't use a lot. And I just like using that little bit. I just feel like it gives it that uh, creaminess and that super fat, but it doesn't overwhelm. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed my first soap making video of the year, and I'll be back for the cut. I am back to cut the lavender and lemon soap. It turned out super beautiful. I love the pale yellow color. It was really bright there for a while. I'm very pleased with it. Now I've cut a loaf already, so I know that it the colors intermingled a little bit more than I wanted them to. It was just a very thin, non-accelerating batch, maybe I should say. It was so cold in my studio that it just wasn't thickening up very quickly. That's one of the perks, it's soaping below room temperature, but it turned out pretty nice, anywho. So you can see here that we kinda got some gray going on. And that is unfortunate, but I'm okay with it. In this particular situation, let's see if we can, ooh, that one has a pretty swirl. Look at it. Gray is still very nice, even if it wasn't what I was going for. I think it's just a very, just calm, soothing bar of soap. Nothing too obnoxious or too bright. And I'm pleased with it. Here's the top. That drizzle turned out super fun, didn't it? Oh, so nice.
so nice and each bar is just a little different oh my goodness look at this one how cool is that that's so fun I love that I'm trying to hold the camera or hold it up to the camera long enough that it's actually taking the time to focus sometimes I'm like la 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 so yeah it turned out great nonetheless and some loaves seem to be a little bit more muddy than others color wise muddy I am cool with it let's just make 2022 the go with the flow year you know we have been thrown so many curveballs that life is just too short to get wound up about color and swirls and all the things Whoa. I did not do that very well oh well because that's the theme of the year <laughs> I am really loving this scent the lavender and lemon it's a classic scent I'm not sure that I've really smelled it before I don't think I've ever soaked it before but I know it's very popular That's really pretty. That's just really pretty. So let's see what's going on. This bar end has a lot of purple. This was kind of the smushy end where it just constantly kept like swooshing up there. And you know, as I smack it down, etc., it does wiggle just a little bit. The other side of the bar, that's cool. So for my first soaps of the year, oh, hold on. Look at this one. Look at it. It's beautiful. This is beautiful. <laughs> it almost looks like, almost like a granite swirl or something. That's really pretty. Then this one has one of the kind of like circle swirlies. So nice. I don't know what I was saying, but I think I was saying was that I'm really pleased for my first soaps of 2022. Getting back in the groove of things. It's hard to get back to soap making when you've had a long break. It's like riding a bicycle, but sometimes you kind of have to just get back into it. Hopefully you're not hearing too much clunking, my daughter. <laughs> is unloading the dishwasher downstairs. I work in an attic space completely separate from my home life. No animals, no kids come up here unless the kids are assisting. But we don't, nobody else just hangs up here. This is a just very clean space. But I still can hear pretty much everything going on downstairs this is the edge piece isn't that pretty with these loaves I have to use the whole thing for oh my do anyway, I use my goodness gracious what in the world was that all about it's feeling a little temperamental anyway on my really big molds, I slice the sides off, but on these ones, I have to leave this edge piece intact. It usually gets cleaned up. Whoa, is it focusing? It usually gets cleaned up during our planing process. So most of the time you can't even tell, but see, this is one of those styles that you'll get on the edge. So it just makes all different designs which I think turns out super nice these are a hint wider look at those those are so cool these are just a hint wider because I cut the loaves which I'm generally forbid forbidden not to do that uh, my husband has been super busy and he has not been up here in months that's all right 
I'm kind of having to slow down a little bit because I'm having a lot of physical issues with my neck and my back. A lot of it that comes with just the hefting of things and standing in one place for so long and all the different things. So I'm struggling a little bit. So we're having to slow down a little this year. We really pushed it hard the last year or so, but it's time just to step back and en enjoy life a little bit more. We're not running some major corporation here. We don't have any employees. It's just us. And we operate based on how I'm feeling. So it's just important right now for us to back down and take care of us a little bit. But I still love making soap and making all the products and I want to be able to have them available for you. So that's the story. All right, I am just going to continue, I guess, just getting them off the cutter. I'm not really doing anything else at this point. Any who's it's. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.